Yeah. Yeah. Back at it. Like a good snack habit. That's right, a good snack habit, chocolate. What we got? Hey man, so I saw this, right? And I, I've been trying to jump on all these tums, so they'll jump out, man. They'll come up, and I'm like, ooh, I want to look at that. Let's do that. Barack Obama, the man who single-handedly tried to destroy the American Constitution. Really? Let's go. So Let this guy that we see in the Hoover Institute, who's part of the Hoover Institute, is this Thomas Sowell's um, company? And he, this is a guy, or this is, this guy works for the Hoover Institute. I think he works for Hoover Institute, and I'm if not mistaken. Thomas Sowell must be an educator at Hoover Institute. Oh, okay. But I think so. Yeah. I could be. I could be wrong. In the presidential debate of October 16th, on the kinds of judges he would nominate to the Supreme Court, quote, I will find the best people in the United, in the United States of America who have a history of strict adherence to the Constitution and not legislating from the bench, close quote. Barack Obama during the same debate. If a woman is out there trying to raise a family, trying to support her family, and is be being treated unfairly, then the court has to stand up if nobody else will. And that's the kind of judge I want. That's Close unconstrained. That somehow or other there are people with, 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 with the judicial robes on who can just decide these things ad hoc, which among other things would mean we would no longer really have law. Uh, you would discover once you got into the courtroom, room in front of the judge, you would then discover what the decision is, but you'd have no clue beforehand. So that would, a full embrace of the unconstrained vision, which Barack Obama seems intent on, mm. would overturn the fundamental basis of American law, which is a nation of laws, not of men. It Absolutely. It would be a nation of, law, of men, of judges. Yes. All right. Uh, September of this year, the Rasmussen Polling Company asked this question. Should the Supreme Court make decisions based on what's written in the Constitution and legal precedents, or should it be guided mostly by a sense of fairness and justice? Close quote. 82% of McCain supporters said the pre Supreme Court should base its decisions on the Constitution. 29% of Obama supporters agree. 11% of McCain supporters said the Supreme Court should make its decisions on fairness. 49% of Obama supporters said that it should. Now, here's the question. You've, you've said... McCain constrained, Obama unconstrained. But what this would seem to indicate, this polling data, that this is not just a debate taking place among politicians or American elites. It's reached very deep into the American public. Oh, absolutely. 49% of Americans think the Supreme well, Court should... Well, of, of Obama supporters. For, excuse me, 49% of Obama supporters, exactly. Say the, so does that startle you? Does it alarm you? It, it doesn't startle me. It depresses me. But, uh, you know, this has been going on for a long time. People complain about a court decision on the basis that, uh, that, that they wish it had turned out differently. But uh, th that isn't the judge's job. Uh, I, there was a wonderful case, and I wish I could remember the title of it, but, uh, which Clarence Thomas uh, said that uh, he really agreed with the, the position taken by one of the litigants in the case, but that he wasn't there to decide that issue. He was there to decide what, what did the law say. Mm -hmm. And the law said otherwise, and so he voted against them. Mm -hmm. uh, and you see the same thing in Oliver Wendell Holmes, where in a number of cases, uh, he, he, he makes very cutting uh, disparagements of one of the litigants in the case and then votes in favor of him. Because he says, I'm not here to decide what the merit is. And one of his, one of his decisions, he said, I am not at liberty to, to discuss the, the justice of the act. The act is what it is, and once I know what that is, that's, that's the decision that I have to make. Well, then, if you see, uh, well, one more question here. The un you write, the unconstrained vision, again, I'm quoting you, has tended historically toward creating more equalized economic and social conditions in society, even if the means chosen imply great inequality in the right to decide such issues and choose such means, close quote. Inequality in the right to decide issues. Does that tell us why the left in the United States seems so much more comfortable with having courts make social policy? Oh, absolutely. That's what's going on. A a absolutely. That uh, the, the, they, they want equality of outcomes, and they will choose how to make the outcomes equal. But they don't want uh, uh, 
equality of choice on the part of the people themselves. Uh, many many of, of, of the liberals say that they're for the family because they're for creating all kinds of goodies to give to families, but they want to take away the family's fundamental function, which is making decisions uh, for members of, of the family itself, particularly the younger members who aren't yet grown. Hmm. I don't know how to really, this was so um, contextually um, correct. I don't even know how to process what we just watched, you know. I don't really see how what he was saying about the Constitution, yeah. how Obama was trying to really, you know, take it away, but I do understand the fact of what he was saying about, you know, towards the end about how, you know, the liberals uh, are liberals are, are more so not in support of, you know, giving I guess their kids, you know, the rights to make certain decisions or guide their decisions yeah. in support of the family is more so in non-support of that. Okay. Yeah, but you yeah, know like his the, Thomas you say, Sowell's you like, base you is. Say based like a D Wade situation. When you say give the kids decisions. Well, I don't know. I mean, that's not a decision that I would give my child to make. You know. Correct. So, but at least to have a voice and opinion, you know. Uh, a, a right to express your emotion, but that don't mean you gonna mean that I'm going to necessarily lean the way that you want me to go just because that's what you're saying. I agree. Yeah. yeah. No, okay. the thing, the, the you know, one of the things about Thomas Sowell is that he it, it, it can be very deep, and you really have to read over and over the passage and yeah. really, really, you know, listen because when a guy reads his quote, it's just very, very analytical and jargon based to I me agree. yeah yeah you gotta yeah yeah you gotta you gotta know how to be able to tap in especially how to structure especially the, the structure of the sentence you have to know what's being said because it's it's written so i don't want to say it's how country say proper but it's written so neatly you're like okay so what does this mean you know so, neatly on the potential preference of equality. That's not neat. It's jar. That's what I mean. Well, I, I call it jargon. Yeah, I call it jargon based. Okay. Yeah, okay. yeah. I say neat. Okay. Back on the hood. Back when you were back when you were young and young and cutting up, you say, "Man, big words." Let's go. All right, man. Like, comment, subscribe. Don't take a nose down. Comment section below if you want some more, man. We appreciate y'all. And see you guys in the next video. Love you. Don't forget to go to buy me a coffee and check out the content over there too. Yeah.